Okay, so I've now had the longer LK5 Pro for over a month and I've been printing with it pretty much solidly. It's done over 500 hours of printing. So I'm pretty confident that I know what's good with this printer and what could use some improvement. If you've watched my review videos before, you know that I like to dig up the dirt on a printer and show you what isn't good with it because that is basically what you wanna know and what the companies won't tell you. Longer were kind enough to send me this printer for free, but don't worry, I won't be holding any punches even so. The good news for Longer though is I have been quite impressed with this machine. I've still found flaws and areas that it could improve, but as a budget printer, it does tick a lot of boxes. Those boxes that it does tick, well, firstly, Longer claim it to be quiet, and it is really quiet. You can often tell how noisy a print is gonna be, even just moving it manually and seeing the amount of mechanical noise that you get from the printer. And it is very, very quiet. The drivers that they've used for the steppers work well, so there's no stepper whine. And again, the movement is nice and smooth. The next pro is the printer is fairly stable. I'm sure that is helped by these stabilizing rods. I was somewhat concerned, and I know some of you were in the, in the comments in the unboxing video about the single Z axis lead screw. However, I've actually found that to perform probably better than the CR10S, for example, which uses two lead screws. And that's because you've not got two stepper motors fighting against each other where they can slowly end up slightly out of whack each time. It just works from the one side and it's quite nicely constrained by these roller wheels on both sides. So if this moves up, this has to move up as well. So I've been impressed with that. And as I said, I've done over 500 hours of printing and I've only had to adjust the bed level twice. So I think that's, that's pretty good going. As a bed slinger design goes, which obviously aren't the best for moving back and forward with the bed, I've also found the movement of the bed to be pretty good, even though it only moves on a single supporting rail in the middle. Obviously for bed slinger designs, the belt tension is very important. And although not the easiest, it is possible to adjust the belt tension by releasing the pressure on the hex bolts either side of the belt and moving the bracket forward and then retightening those bolts. So that does work. For me, standout feature that's absolutely blown me away and made this printer a joy to use has been the touchscreen and UI. It's fabulous. I showed a few of the menus on the unboxing video I did, but really it is just a joy to use. It feels like something from Race 3D, that's what it's reminded me of, which is a printer that's thousands of pounds, basically. So I've been really impressed with the, the touchscreen and UI. For a budget printer to have something like that is a really nice touch and it does make you feel like you're using a better product than some of the things out there. I've also not found that the software is buggy, or the firmware is buggy, so that is always a nice bonus. I've not had to touch the firmware or update it at all. The last pro I wanted to talk about was I've actually found this printer reasonably quick and well for a bed slinger I found it reasonably quick. I've been printing with the same file and settings and uh, even down to the acceleration and jerk on three different bed slinger printers and this one's been the fastest so that's quite good. Obviously not by huge margins, I'm talking a half an hour difference between this printer and the slowest bed slinger over the course of a 12 hour print. If you watched my last video, the Sunlu S8 review, you might be thinking that this difference could have been caused by how long the printers pause when they change height and save their progress. And I'm pretty sure that is exactly what it is. Generally, this printer has been much better at saving its progress and so the pauses like this one here don't last quite as long. Might not seem like much but over a long print those changes add up. The final thing I wanted to compliment actually is obviously these supporting rods are really nice and I've also appreciated how these aluminium extrusions are closed off on the front because when they're not you end up after a lot of printing after 500 hours of printing you'd normally find that all in the grooves would be full of little bits of filament, little bits of extrusion, and it makes a mess. Whereas this looks almost as good as the day I got it out of the box. That's the pros list out of the way. Let's move on to the cons and what I've 
not found quite so good with this printer. So the first con is the cooling isn't great. Cooling on this 3D printer is supplied by what looks to be a 40 by 40 by 10 millimeter fan. And that just points down and is directed through this 3D printed fan enclosure, which I suspect is probably an ABS or ASA to be heat resistant, but it's not particularly well aligned. It's quite far away from the nozzle and it also has a, a print defect in it anyway. This style of fan where it's not completely enclosed, not like a radial fan, generally don't work as well anyway for the cooling. So when you have that just on one side and you have a not particularly brilliant fan duct coupled with it, you're not going to get the best cooling ever. So that is something I probably would upgrade or play with at some point if I was going to. So if you were to buy this printer, I probably would recommend designing a slightly different fan duct, which could be quite a fun project, or maybe even switching it out for a radial fan. And the other thing, which is not so much a con, but it's an area I always pick up on uh, because I'm someone that hates waste, is the extruded drive gear and the filament runout sensor are both plastic. What this means is after a lot of printing, you do get wear. And I've already started to notice that the filament runout sensor isn't working as reliably. It can pull down if it's coming from the bottom or pull up if it's coming from the top. And slowly it shifts away from the lever. It has a little bit more room against the lever. And that can mean that the filament runout sensor triggers and you end up with the printer stopping because it thinks it's run out of filament. The other thing I think could be better on this printer is the filament holder. I don't like that it sticks so far out and it's on an angle like it is because that obviously affects the efficiency, the space efficiency that you're getting from this 3D printer, which is something I am going to touch on now. So the build volume of this printer is 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters. It's actually probably 310 by 310, but uh, longer have been conservative on their estimates there, which is good. But the outer dimensions are 580 by 540 by 663. So you're looking at a a build volume to printer dimensions of about 17.3%, which is okay, but it could be better. For example, you'll notice this printer sits quite high off the desk, and I think longer could have quite easily shaved probably two to three centimeters off the height and got it down a little bit lower. That's me nitpicking a little bit, I suppose, but when it comes to things like print farms, you do have to think about efficiency. And I suppose the fact I'm nitpicking on that point is just because I have been generally quite impressed with the printer. It is a printer I would consider for a print farm because it has been so reliable. And so space efficiency is something you will want to consider. The final con I have for you is that you can't adjust the tension of the extruder. It is just one set tension. It has performed very, very well, so I can't really knock it but I have only been printing with PLA and for some materials it can be recommended to tweak the extruder tension so it might have been nice to have that flexibility. That said if you're a first-time printer you've never printed before it's probably quite a good thing that it's fixed and fixed so well because it means that you don't have to worry about the tension. So what are my thoughts on this printer? Well you can't knock it really. It's, it is a budget printer, it's going to have some flaws the flaws aren't too drastic. I'd say the, the biggest one is the fan, but you can work around that in part orientations. And if you wanted to fix it up, you could. The UI has been a dream and it really has made this printer a joy to use. And for me, that's really important. If I've got 20 printers in a row, is this going to be one of the printers that I'm going to go to? And because it is so easy to use, the answer nine times out of 10 is yes. So for that reason, I think I would. I think I would recommend this printer. It's, it's a good little unit. I was originally a fan of the CR10 and I think this printer does have a number of improvements over that printer. So really, I can't knock it. Price wise, it is currently 329.99 US dollars and there's a coupon in the link below for an additional $20 off. That's just a coupon. I don't benefit from using that or not. It just is what it is. Uh, so that takes the price of the printer down to $309.99 US dollars. They don't have this printer stocked in the UK. So if you are buying in the UK, you will need to pay 
the value added tax on this printer, so whatever it ends up costing you, expect another 20% when it arrives. But if you're buying in Europe or America, the price is what it is on the website, as I understand. Anyway, so that's it for this review. I hope you enjoyed. I've got more reviews coming up on the channel in the near future. So don't forget to subscribe if you like that sort of content. As always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and I'd love to know your thoughts on this review in the comments down below. Hopefully see you there. And if you've got nothing to say, then just give me a hashtag longer. It does help the channel.